A killing in Georgia has Americans at each other's throats on race, guns, and criminal justice. But while the left gins up a fake race narrative and riles everybody up over a very sad local story, a major national political scandal implicating the highest levels of the Obama administration goes uncovered. How convenient is that? Then, CBS gets caught lying about coronavirus, NBC gets caught lying about Attorney General Bill Barr, and a reopened Georgia disproves the COVID profits of gloom and doom. All that and more. I'm Michael Knowles, and this is The Michael Knowles Show. What did Barack Obama know, and when did he know it? That is the question on my mind today. It's the question I want to know what you think about in the comments section. Michael Flynn, FBI spying. What did Barack Obama know? We'll get into some of the evidence that's been dribbling out on this because the mainstream media don't want to cover it. This is the big point. Okay, the mainstream media push fake news in two different ways. The first way we're very familiar with. They spin the stories. They make up some of the reporting. They exaggerate other parts of the reporting, right? That's, it, the first part is how they report the stories. But the second part of how the left pushes fake news is actually more important than that. And that is how they select the stories that they're going to cover. So it's not even in how they report it. It's in the very fact that they are reporting some stories and that they are not reporting other stories. Case in point, great example of this, is a very sad local story, the killing of Ahmad Arbery. This is the big story that blew up over the weekend. It's got everybody at everybody's throats, and I think pretty much everybody is missing the point, at least as, as a matter of national political perspective. What do we know about the Ahmad Arbery shooting? Two white guys shot and killed a black guy named Ahmad Arbery. The guys were tailing Arbery in a car. This is in Georgia. The two guys had their guns out, right? So they, they were brandishing weapons. Arbery knew that they had weapons. There was a tussle for one of the guns and Arbery ended up dead. And we know all of this because one guy, a third guy filmed it for some reason. Actually, that does sort of play a role in how we think about the case, but that's pretty much all that we know about it, right? Then predictably, left-wingers pushed this narrative that this was a modern-day lynching, that Ahmad was out minding his own business, out for a jog, and these two crypto clansmen came up and lynched him. Then some right-wingers pointed out that Arbery had an arrest record, that he had been poking around a, a house that was an open construction site in the neighborhood, and uh, all of which, I guess, you know, tells us something about the left-wing narrative, doesn't really tell us much about the case itself though, right? Just because a guy has an arrest record, just because he's poking around a, a house that's under construction in the neighborhood, that doesn't justify killing him, does it? No, I don't think any of us would say that. So then three questions about the incident itself. Was it murder? Possibly. It was possibly murder, but I don't know that they're going to get very far, the prosecutors, if they push this idea that it's murder. Because if it was just murder, if these two guys were out there trying to snipe down a black man going for a job, they probably would have killed him sooner, wouldn't they? they? They had the open shot, they were trailing him, but they waited until he grabbed for a weapon and then there's this tussle that happens off camera and then he dies. Is that going to stick as a murder charge? Possibly, but that's a tougher case to make. Also, if it was murder, they probably wouldn't have filmed it, right? That doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't want to, you don't want to film yourself committing a crime on camera. Uh, was it manslaughter? That seems more likely. You know, these, these guys were out. They were being vigilantes. They were following this guy who they suspected of committing a nonviolent crime. And so they didn't actually want to shoot him. But then, you know, Arbery feels like he's pinned into a corner. So he grabs the gun reasonable thing to do. And then there's this tussle and, you know, somehow Arbery ends up dead. That seems far more likely to me in terms of something that's going to stick for a prosecutor. I guess the third option is, was it justified? This seems the least likely by far to me, you know, if, if the crime he's being accused of is nonviolent and we don't even know if Arbery committed a nonviolent crime, then that wouldn't justify killing, right? Nobody, nobody would suggest that. 
probably people think that these two guys were overstepping. They should have waited for the police to get there. So uh, probably that's not going to work. Okay. From a national political perspective, none of this is the primary question. I, th- I think most of the discussion of the Arbery killing ends there. Was it murder? Was it manslaughter? Was it justified? He had an arrest record. None of that is the point. Okay. This, I actually don't really want to talk about the Arbery case. I think the Arbery case is a local, very sad local story. I want to talk about the fact that we're talking about the Arbery case. Why are we talking about this? There are 53 homicides in the United States every single day. Why this one? Why did this one blow up as the big news story of the weekend? It's because it supports a left-wing race narrative. LeBron James is the king of this. LeBron tweets out, we're literally hunted every day, every time we step foot outside the comfort of our homes. Can't even go for a damn jog, man. Like WTF, man, are you kidding me? With like seven exclamation points and question marks. No, man, for real, are you kidding me? five exclamation points. I'm sorry, Ahmad. Rest in paradise and my prayers and blessings sent to the heavens above to your family. Then it's a prayer hand. Then it's a black power hand. uh, Then it's a red heart. Hashtag stay woke. Hashtag profiled because we are simply black. Then two crying faces. That's not true. What he tweeted out is not true. LeBron James is not hunted down every time he leaves his home. The statistics are clear. There is no epidemic of racist whites hunting down innocent black guys in the United States. It doesn't happen. You can look at the statistics. It's not true. On top of that, on this specific case, we know of very few people. How many people could you imagine in this country would support the unjust killing of a man? Very few people. The reason stories like this get attention is because they are exceedingly rare. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway is this is a very sad local story that is made into a national story to push a left-wing race narrative. And we should not fall into the trap of encouraging that. I almost wasn't even going to talk about this because I don't want to encourage the left making a spectacle out of these sad local stories to push a narrative. But I think it's important because you've got to be aware when the left does it. Every time the left is pushing some story like this, a story that is obviously very emotional, very sad, very dramatic, but again, local, not indicative of broader trends, not relevant to questions of national politics or international politics, Every time they're doing that, it's because they don't want you to be looking at another story. And that has never been truer than this one. There is serious bias going on. There's a big cover going on. We'll get to it in one second. First, though, I have got to thank our friends over at Bambi. I've got to thank all of our sponsors. We really appreciate them sticking with us in these difficult times. And in a time of economic uncertainty, it is more important than ever to have a good HR department. When running a business, HR issues can kill you. Wrongful termination suits, minimum wage requirements, labor regulations, especially now that the regs are changing like every five minutes and HR manager salaries are not cheap. You know, the average HR manager in the United States makes 70 grand a year. Bambi spelled B-A-M-B-E-E was created specifically for small businesses. You can get a dedicated HR manager, craft HR policy, maintain your compliance. How much? How much would you pay for that? How about $99 a month? I know it seems unbelievable, but it's, it's terrific with Bambi. Your dedicated HR manager is available by phone, email, or real-time chat from onboarding to terminations. They customize your policies to fit your business. Go to Bambi.com slash Michael right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash Michael. Bam to the B-E-E.com slash Michael. M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Go check it out. Sad as the local story is, it has no significance to national politics, to broader trends. Left-wing race hustlers are going to tell you that it does, but you can look at the statistics. And it's a good thing that it doesn't have a relevance to broader trends, right? To national politics. Meanwhile, though, there is another news story that has major significance for national politics. 
and that one the mainstream media don't want to cover. That is the exoneration of Mike Flynn, the national security advisor who was brought in. He was the first NSA under Trump and the FBI set him up they tried not just to entrap him, which they, they did, but they tried explicitly to get him fired. There was a major political uh, component to all of this. The media are working overtime to bury and rewrite this story. So from the moment that Mike Flynn was fired, what we heard uniformly from the mainstream media, they must have all gotten the exact same talking point sheet. We were told that it was a conspiracy theory that they went after Flynn. That, look, Flynn was a dirty guy. He had dirty dealings with Russia. It was a good thing that they got him out. And any suggestion that the FBI entrapped Flynn was a wild conspiracy theory. President Trump and his top aides have been routinely ignoring the truth and pushing phony conspiracy theories. The president seems to be saying that uh, this was a case of entrapment, that Michael Flynn was essentially pressured into lying. What is your response? I think that's hogwash. You know, there are all kinds of conspiracy theories about how he was entrapped. The FBI agents didn't do anything wrong here. So I think that's important because there are a lot of sort of uh, conspiracy theories. They all work together. And, you know, the Fox news people in the White House fuel these sort of rumors. Do they send these around with fax machines? They come up with these conspiracy theories and they send them around on fax machines. They should just knock it off and realize that their ridiculous conspiracy theories are going to be knocked down. Stop. Stop with the conspiracy theories. So I think that loud sound you heard at about 1230 Eastern was the sound of 10,000 conspiracy theories by the Trump defenders exploding. The sound you hear is a million conspiracy theories exploding. I could call them the Trumpettes. All over the country, their heads were blown up. Here's another conspiracy theory that has been blown to bits. Another conspiracy theory blown to bits. That supercut goes on for, I think, another 40 seconds of the same exact conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. And in a way, they're right. The idea that, that Mike Flynn was set up by the FBI was a conspiracy theory. Trouble is, every so often, conspiracy theories are true because there are conspiracies. And what happened to Mike Flynn was a conspiracy. We now know it. We saw the notes from the FBI. They said, what is the goal here? Why are we questioning Flynn? Is it to get the truth? Is it to catch him in a lie? Or is it to get him fired? And he's, look, Flynn is not the only one they went after. We know that the FBI and the DOJ and what we, what we would call the deep state of bureaucrats in the Obama administration were spying on the Trump campaign. They were trying to undermine the Trump campaign. And then once Trump was elected, they tried to undermine the administration in the case of Flynn successfully. Now we know that the guy was exonerated. The DOJ is dropping the case into Flynn entirely, right? Total exoneration, a complete upending of it. It was a conspiracy. And the media were part of that conspiracy <laughs> because they were covering up uh, what was going on at the time that Flynn was fired, and they're covering it up now, okay? We're, they're not running this. They want to run sensationalized stories to get people ginned up emotionally about topics that they can control, topics that fit their narrative, not the other narrative, that Obama, his administration was corrupt. He's a thoroughly corrupt Chicago politician. And by the way, this scandal might go all the way to the top of that corrupt administration. So, they were spreading lies and fake news then. Now, now that Flynn is exonerated, the media are still trying to cover it up. Chuck Todd, I've got to play you this clip. Chuck Todd on NBC just aired a clip of Bill Barr, the attorney general, talking about this topic. And he cut it in such a way that Bill Barr seems like he was saying the opposite of what he was actually saying. And Chuck Todd is not a stupid man. The people at NBC are actually not stupid people. They know exactly what they're doing and they are trying to tell you the opposite of the true news. We'll get to that in a second. First, I got to thank our friends over at Zip Recruiter. You know, a lot of people are looking for work right now. Friends of mine are looking for work right now. Relatives of mine are looking for work. They should make their job search as efficient as possible. Zip Recruiter's focus has not changed. They are still doing what they've done from the beginning. That is helping people who need jobs find work. 
and helping growing businesses find the right people for their open roles. So if you're looking for a job right now, know that ZipRecruiter is working with you to find the right job faster. You know, chaos breeds opportunity. Doesn't always feel like that, but it does. And ZipRecruiter is there dedicated to helping you get hired. Whether you're looking for jobs in caretaking or food delivery and goods or building medical facilities, supplying protective equipment, right? The list goes on and on. ZipRecruiter's app will send you up-to-date job openings so you can be one of the first to apply. Uh, by connecting people who need jobs and companies that need people, ZipRecruiter is working with all of us so that we can keep moving forward. Uh, it's very important right now, times like this, for companies to come on together. So let's work together ziprecruiter.com slash work together. Go check it out right now. Chuck Todd on NBC plays a clip of Bill Barr talking about the Flynn exoneration. Listen to the clip. Listen to Chuck Todd's reaction. You brought up Bill Barr. Peggy Noonan, I want you to listen to this Bill Barr answer to a question about what will history say about this. Wait till you hear this answer. Take a listen. When history looks back on this decision, how do you think it will be written? Well, history is written by the winner, so it largely depends on, on <laughs> uh, who's writing the history. I was struck, Peggy, by the cynicism of the answer. It's a correct answer, but he's the attorney general. He didn't make the case that he was upholding the rule of law. He was almost admitting that, yeah, this is a, this is a political job. If you only saw the clip of Bill Barr that Chuck Todd played, you would agree with that, right? You, the, the way they cut it, there's Bill Barr there. Well, you know, history is written by the winners. <laughs> so it's almost as though history isn't objective. It's just a matter of pure power and we're going to win because we're corrupt. That's the, that's the implication of the clip that Chuck Todd sang. And then Chuck Todd, right on cue, he's a pretty good actor, that guy. He responds, he says, I'm floored, Peggy Noonan, by the cynicism Oh, me, I thought government was so much uh, more honest and straightforward than this, but I'm floored by the cynicism. I'm floored by the cynicism of Chuck Todd because that guy deceptively edited that video clip. That's a phrase that is truly abused in our culture, but if it ever applies, it applies to what Chuck Todd just did because he cut that clip out of context. He cut it before Bill Barr makes the argument that Chuck Todd says he doesn't make. Take a listen to the whole clip. When history looks back on this decision, how do you think it will be written? Well, history is written by the winner, so it largely depends on, on <laughs> uh, who's writing the history. But I think a fair history would say it was a, it was a good decision because it, it upheld the rule of law. It, helped, it, uh, it upheld the standards of the Department of Justice, and it undid what was an injustice. This is the point, Chuck Todd was trying to pretend Bill Barr didn't make. He goes, look, this was a good decision. This decision upheld the rule of law. This decision upheld the standards of the Department of Justice. Unlike what we saw happening in the previous administration, we are actually going to uphold standards of justice. What about that first part that Bill Barr was joking about that Chuck Todd tried to pretend was the whole clip? The first part was Bill Barr joking about exactly what Chuck Todd was doing to him right? What Bill Barr is joking about here is not that he's going to be the winner and he's going to write the history and he's going to write out uh, all of the sins of the Trump administration and make it look good. Bill Barr is joking about the fact that th the news media in particular in this country don't give conservatives a fair shake. And therefore when the history is written, when Hollywood rewrites histories, which they do all the time, they're doing it right now in a few notable cases, then they make conservatives look really bad and they make liberals look really good. When many academic historians who lean left write histories, they make the conservatives look really bad. They make the liberals look really good. He's basically saying, look, we did this. We uncovered this. We pursued justice. We're probably not going to get credit for it because history is written by the winners and the left tends to win in the United States. But regardless of how it's written, we did the right thing. These were the standards of justice. Chuck Todd exactly flips that. That's what the media do all the time. And the reason they care about this, the reason they care about what is a, at this point, what, three and a half year old issue, the firing of Mike Flynn, the reason they care about Bill Barr, this, you know, veteran DC lawyer and attorney general, he's already served in the role before. The reason they care about all of this is, is because it touches Obama. 
it touches their golden child, Barack Obama. No drama Obama. Scandal-free Obama. I mean, forget about Fast and Furious. Forget about the IRS targeting Obama's political opponents. Forget about this. Forget about that. Forget about the spying. Forget about all of it, right? No scandals at all. They want to make his legacy look pristine, and it implicates a lot of people. Now, how do we know it implicates a lot of people? Those of us who have been suggesting for some time now that perhaps the Obama administration knew more than they're letting on about the spying into Donald Trump, about the undermining of the Trump administration. Those of us who've been suggesting maybe this goes a little bit higher in the administration than people were letting on. We've been called conspiracy theorists. Well, (laughs) as we just saw, maybe the biggest conspiracy theory of the last three years turns out to have been true. Not because conspiracy theories are true, but because conspiracies occasionally happen. It looks like we're looking at one. Mike Flynn's lawyer, Sidney Powell, went on Maria Bartiromo's show uh, just a few days ago and talked about the new evidence that is emerging with the firing. Who made the call? Who did it when? Who knew about spying? Where these meetings took place? And even if some of them took place in the Oval Office, Here's what Sidney Powell had to say. Well, the day before, Comey had found and McCabe had found the transcripts of Flynn's call with Kislyak, and he briefed Clapper on it immediately. Clapper then immediately went and briefed President Obama on it. Then they have the Oval Office meeting on the 5th. Comey admits in his testimony that the FBI are the people that unmasked General Flynn, our people, whatever that means. And at the meeting on the 5th, Sally Yates was stunned because Obama mentions to her out of the blue about the call and the transcript of the call. So you think this goes all the way up to the top to President Obama? Absolutely. Who, who's going to be charged? I have no idea. That's up to John Durham okay. and Attorney General Senior- Barr. Now listen to that at the end, right? N- nothing new that, that, that you and I haven't known for some time now, right? That this involves a lot of senior people. It might go all the way up to the top. We know that Barack Obama was very involved in these minute political decisions. He would brag about it, right? He would always go out there and say, I'm a better political director than my political director. Obama kept a, a very tight watch on these things. So we, we knew all that. When Maria asks, who's going to be charged? Could we see this go all the way to the top? Sidney Powell says, well, you'd have to ask John Durham. And now this brings in the other side that the mainstream media are not covering. There's a criminal investigation going on right now. There's an investigation of the investigation. You remember, we've had three years or whatever it was, two and a half years of Russia Gate and the Mueller investigation. And all those poor liberals were wearing shirts that said, it's Mueller time. We're going to take out Trump because he's colluding with Russia. He's actually a Manchurian candidate for Vladimir Putin. You know, Donald Trump, the guy we've all known for 40 years, the famous TV show host. And yeah, he's actually secretly a Russian spy or something. It was always a dumb argument. And then, you know, Mueller completed his investigation and they didn't get anything on Trump. After that, the attorney general appointed another guy, U.S. attorney John Durham, to start looking into all the issues that surrounded that Mueller investigation. That that second investigation has been going on for some time now. It's directly related to the events that we're talking about here. If you think that the exoneration of Mike Flynn was the last we've heard on this topic, you are very mistaken. We are headed for some insane political times. And I know, because it seems like we're already living in very insane political times. There's a reason you haven't heard about these stories on the mainstream media. There's a reason that the mainstream media are desperate to push any other story that they possibly can, especially these cynical, divisive stories, these local stories that they can make into national divisive political issues. The reason is they want to distract you. You should not allow yourself to be distracted because for those of us who are looking at the real story right now, it looks like the characters implicated up to and including Barack Obama are getting real, real nervous. Obama came out swinging against President Trump over the weekend in a leaked phone call. Things are getting very intense between these two gentlemen and between the two political sides of our country. Trump came back swinging against him. Major stories. And there's another story the mainstream media are trying to cover up that relates to exactly what we're living through right now in this lockdown. We'll get to that. But first, 
I've got to thank our friends over at LifeLock. You know, there are a lot of internet scammers out there, all right? And sometimes they get you, you know, they get you on a phishing expedition. You put your password in where you shouldn't put your password in. It happens to the best of us. It even, I'm ashamed to admit, happens to me. In a recent study, researchers revealed a substantial rise in the number of cyber attacks performed by websites posing as Netflix, especially these days. That's kind of nuts, right? Scammers are focusing more attention on people streaming content during this stay-at-home era. Nobody ever accused these criminals of being dumb, okay? They're, they're pretty sharp guys, and the hackers are shifting their resources away from targeting businesses and toward activities that can reach us directly in our homes. On average, over 2,600 coronavirus-related cyber attacks occur each day day. Good thing there's LifeLock, which is a leader in identity theft protection. Detects a wide range of identity threats like your social security number for sale on the dark web, for instance. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses, but LifeLock can see threats that you might miss on your own if you're just monitoring your credit. Join now, save up to 25% off your first year. Go to LifeLock.com slash Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S. That's LifeLock.com slash Knowles for 25% off. Go do it right now. Lifelock.com slash Knowles. Uh, We've got a lot more to get to. A lot of it going up to Barack Obama. You can hear the man's own words. You know, until I hear Barack Obama again, I, I always forget what a drag his presidency was, what a terrible president he was. And then I'm reminded of that. Well, dark days may be ahead for Barack Obama because he got a pass from the mainstream media for a long time. But now it looks as though Uh, some consequences are coming down the pike. Then Georgia is, uh, looks like it's reopening and you haven't heard a whole lot about that. I wonder why. We'll get to why. A lot more fake news. We'll get to that in a second. But first, I want to take a moment to thank you. And I want to tell you about Daily Wire's newest, most exclusive membership tier, the All Access Insider. The All Access Insider membership tier is our premier level of membership. What do you get? You, you know what you get. You get the ad-free website. You get the live Q&A discussions. You get more of the Ben Shapiro show. You get a leftist tears tumbler. That's great. That's very important, obviously, these days when uh, we're going to see the Flynn exoneration fill it up halfway, then the Durham investigation, it's going to go over the top. If you're in an all-access insider tier, though, you also get to participate in the all-access live each night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And do you know who's hosting tonight? Ben. So head on over to dailywire.com slash subscribe, join the all access club with a new membership or an upgrade and get 10% off with coupon code Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S. That's dailywire.com slash subscribe. See you there. Coupon code Knowles and you will get 10% off. They're turning up the heat on Barack Obama, and you can see that the former president is sweating. He came out swinging against President Trump over the weekend in a leaked uh, phone call that he was having with his supporters, talking specifically about the Flynn exoneration. The news uh, over the last 24 hours, I think, has been somewhat downplayed about uh, the Justice Department dropping uh, charges against Michael Flynn and the fact that there is no precedent that anybody can find for uh, someone who's been charged with perjury uh, just getting off scot-free. That's the kind of stuff where you you begin to uh, get worried that basic, not just institutional norms, but uh, our, our basic understanding of, of rule of law uh, is, 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 uh, is at risk. So what he's saying is not true for a few reasons. He's starting to get worried, obviously, but he says there's no precedent for someone who's been charged with perjury to get off scot-free. I wonder if Barack Obama's ever heard of a guy named Bill Clinton. <laughs> You, uh, excuse me, Mr. Obama. Have you ever heard about your uh, Democratic predecessor, Bill Clinton? Because I'm pretty sure he perjured himself and I'm pretty sure he got off scot-free for it. He's trying to focus on this question of lying. Mike Flynn lied and he's getting off scot-free. It's never happened before. He was entrapped. 
by your goons, okay? If you think there's no precedent for Mike Flynn to get entrapped, then to make a slight mistake, then to have the FBI use that to try to get him fired, their words, not mine. Is there any precedent for a sitting U.S. president weaponizing his law enforcement arms to undermine an incoming presidential administration? Is there any precedent for that? I don't think so. I think there is precedent for guys being entrapped by the FBI. I don't think there's precedent for you weaponizing your administration, your deep state, your law enforcement arms to undercut a political opponent and your successor in the White House. That's what there's no precedent for. It's why we're in uncharted territory in this case. It's why we don't know what's going to happen. When we ask, what did Barack Obama know and when did he know it? The implication is that this could, this could involve Barack Obama in some pretty dark stuff. What do we do with that? We don't want to start throwing former presidents in jail, but we do want people to be held accountable for abusing their power, which it certainly would appear that senior Obama administration officials did. President Trump responded to Obama's attacks on him. He just tweeted out one word, Obamagate. <laughs> and by the way, I checked this morning, I think it was trending at 2.6 million tweets or something like that. And then you look and Twitter tries to reduce the number of tweets. So then two hours later, you look and it says 2.1 million tweets. And you say, hold on, wait, there are fewer tweets now about it than there were 12 hours ago. Trump wasn't uh, happy to leave it at the one tweet. He was asked about what's going on what was going on in the Obama administration. He was asked about Mike Flynn and he used the phrase human scum to describe those top Obama officials. Could we get your reaction to some breaking news? The Justice Department has decided to dismiss the case against Michael Flynn. Are you aware of that? Uh, I didn't know that was uh, happening at this moment. Uh, I felt it was going to happen just by watching and seeing like everybody else does. Uh, He was an innocent man. He is a... uh, great gentleman. He was targeted by the Obama administration, and he was targeted in order to try and take down a president. And what they've done is a disgrace, and I hope a big price is going to be paid. And I hope a lot of people are going to pay a big price, because they're dishonest, crooked people. They're scum, and I say it a lot. They're scum. They're human scum. This should never have happened in this country. A duly elected president, and they went after him by going after fine people. And it's a disgrace. The Obama administration, Justice Department, was a disgrace. And they got caught. They got caught. Very dishonest people. But much more than dishonest. It's treason. It's treason. That's a big word. Treason is a big word. And it has serious consequences for how this sort of thing will be prosecuted. That's the claim coming from President Trump. And I know that he's kind of loose with his words sometime. I don't think he's being loose here. I think this has been the central issue of his administration. The, this, the central problem of his administration is that, that the left in this country and his predecessor has never accepted that Donald Trump got elected and they've been trying to undermine him the whole way. And now it's President Trump's turn to investigate the investigators. And it's probably not going to turn out very well for them. The Flynn story is not the only national political story that the left is trying to cover up right now. Another one is Georgia. You remember how Georgia opened up, lifted the lockdown? And we were told there were going to be deaths all on the streets and it was going to be terrible and, and it'll prove that we need to stay locked down forever. It's kind of weird that we haven't heard about Georgia, right? You would expect, they promised us we were going to hear about Georgia, you would expect, except they haven't covered it because Georgia's doing just fine. The Republican governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, celebrated the state's lowest number of hospitalized coronavirus patients. Uh, on Saturday. He also celebrated the fewest number of coronavirus patients on ventilators on Saturday. That was 15 days after he started to reopen his state. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because the respiratory symptoms of coronavirus typically start to appear about five or six days after exposure. It could be as early as two days after exposure, but the longest it could be is 14 days after exposure. So they reopen the state and things are doing fine. And so what the, the, the left isn't going to grapple with that. These are the stories that matter, right? When we're talking about our government, the absolutely rank corruption that was going on in the Obama administration that bled over into Trump as a tax on Trump, that's probably the biggest story. 
And then when we talk about our national political situation right now, the lockdown is the biggest story. It's a question we have to say, what do we do about this? Are we going to remain locked down forever, shut down the global economy, keep 40 million people out of work, 50 million people out of work, let unemployment go past 20%, maybe to 30%, maybe more? All right, that's the question. Any evidence that supports the left's desire to remain locked down, at least through the 2020 election, is going to be pushed. Any evidence that contradicts that narrative is going to be suppressed, and that's what's going on in Georgia, and we should all tweet about it. We should all post on Facebook about it. We should shout it from the rooftops. Look at Georgia. Georgia is doing relatively very well compared to other states that have remained locked down that are not doing as well. Okay, I'm not saying that the coronavirus issue is simple. I'm not saying lift all lockdowns right now immediately and everything's going to be fine. Don't misunderstand me. But what I am saying is look at all of the evidence. Don't just look at the evidence that the left wants you to look at. The, the most important media tool that the left has for pushing fake news is this story selection. Okay, you see it again and again. Sometimes though, let's not, let's not go too much in that direction. Let's not forget that sometimes one of the tools they use to push fake news is just to lie, just to outright lie. James O'Keefe Project Veritas showed us this uh, last week. It, James O'Keefe showed that CBS News faked a segment about coronavirus patients. You had NBC News fake a segment about Mike Flynn, and now you have CBS News faking. They staged a line of cars waiting to get treatment and tests for coronavirus. It wasn't real. The, the people in the cars were essentially actors. They were employees of the pharmacy or employees of the news uh, that were posing as coronavirus patients. Here's James O'Keefe. You're telling me you're a hundred percent certain that CBS News, CBS News Corporation, National, staged a fake event. They faked the news. They faked the reality and broadcasted that to all of their audience last Friday on CBS This Morning. 100%, absolutely. And uh, apparently the news crew wanted more people in the line because they knew it was scheduled. Well, we knew they, they were coming. We had no clue that we were going to have to, like, do face patients. Gotcha. And did she tell you guys, like, hey, you're not actually getting tested? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she did. She just, she just, well, just to make it look busy. Right there. That's crazy. Well, I didn't see you guys do the swab at all. I just saw you talking yeah. with them. And then I was talking with you the other girl. There were a couple of real patients, which made it worse. They probably just wanted it to look busy. <laughs> it's my guess. They just wanted it to look busy. I mean, it goes on and on. James O'Keefe talks to a lot of people here. It seems pretty clear. They will just lie to you. You have to be on guard for that too. It's a, that's the more obvious way that they, they, they push their narrative, but they do that as well. The most important accomplishment of the Trump administration so far has not been on immigration. It's not been on any one political issue. It hasn't been the taxes. It has been destroying the credibility of the media. This is priority number one, because the media are the ones who craft the whole way that we think and talk about politics in this country, from very sad local stories all the way up to national lockdowns. We got some good news uh, over the past couple of weeks, which is that President Trump's new White House press secretary, Kayla Mac Kaylee McEnany, is basically just as good at it as Donald Trump is. No one's quite as good at smacking down the press as Trump is, but she is really talented at it. She held a press briefing. She was asked about a prior comment she'd made at some point on Fox News, and she was prepared, first of all, ready for the question, and she flawlessly smacked these reporters down. Um, Kaylee, in a previous life, before you were press secretary, you worked for the campaign, and you made a comment, I believe, on Fox, in which you said, President Trump will not allow the coronavirus to come to this country. Given what has happened since then, obviously, would you like to take that back? So this is such a setup, right? Uh, Kaylee, I am willing to give you the opportunity to take back that dumb, stupid thing that you said. So can you just admit that you're wrong and incompetent and an idiot and we, the press, are right and we're going to dictate how you do your job? Uh, loosely translated, but that's what the reporter was getting at. Kaylee McEnany keeps her composure and then responds perfectly. 
Well, first, let me note, I was asked a question um, on Fox Business about the President's travel restrictions. I noted what was the intent behind those travel restrictions, which is we will not see the coronavirus come here. We will not see terrorism come here, referring to an earlier set of travel restrictions. I guess I would turn the question back on the media and ask similar questions. Does Vox want to take back that they proclaim that the coronavirus would not be a deadly pandemic? Does the Washington Post want to take back that they told Americans to get a grip the flu is bigger than the coronavirus? Does the Washington Post likewise want to take back that our brains are causing us to exaggerate the threat of the coronavirus? Does the New York Times want to take back that fear of the virus may be spreading faster than the virus itself? Does NPR want to take back that the flu was a much bigger threat than the coronavirus? And finally, once again, the Washington Post, would they like to take back that the government should not respond aggressively to the coronavirus? I'll leave you with those questions and maybe you'll have some answers in a few days. How about you guys answer, you reporters? Actually, as she walks out of the room, you can hear one of them say, you were prepared for that. Like, yeah, she was. Professionals prepare. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that the press were prepared for that themselves. The silver lining, I don't want to leave you without hope here. The silver lining on all of this, with the press ganging up against you, trying to divide Americans, trying to get them to focus on the shiny object in the corner rather than the rank corruption that is before their eyes that they're implicated in. The silver lining is sometimes the press are their own worst enemy. Sometimes the press undercut their own argument. And I, I saw this on the Today Show on NBC. They were doing a segment on the Today Show on the Gerber baby, right? This is so, such a soft, fluffy segment. How could this have national political import? NBC News, the, the whole left-wing media apparatus, right? completely gung-ho behind abortion, always talking about abortion as women's health care, women's rights, the war on women, if you ever try to protect little babies. So they do a segment on the Gerber baby, no big deal. And you have a family that has this adopted baby. So the new Gerber baby is uh, this little black girl and the family is a white family. So it's pretty, pretty clear from the outset that the baby is adopted. And I guess NBC just didn't think about the implications of doing a story that's all focused on adoption. Listen to the way that NBC allows a wonderful pro-life message to get out on network television. Courtney, you entered Magnolia into the running because your family story is a really important one that you wanted to share. Can you explain why that is? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, obviously, our family was built through adoption, and we celebrate adoption in our family every single day. And, you know, the real hero in this story um, are Magnolia's birth parents. Um, they chose her life, and um, they sent her on this incredible journey. And I was able to speak with them yesterday and share with them what was going on today and what was happening. And if you could hear the joy in their voice and how proud they are of this little girl. And they're walking right now. And um, yeah. we love them so much. Oh, what a great story. If NBC only knew that this was the way it was going to go, they never would have aired it, right? Because right now what the left is trying to do is push a message of racial division uh, based on sensationalizing a sad local story and trying to pretend that this has implications for the broader politics, that we're, we're in some sort of epidemic of racial killing, of, of uh, white guys, racist whites killing black guys, hunting them down on the street. You know, basically, they're just hiding their clan hoods, right? And this is not borne out by the statistics. It is not happening. But that's the story they're trying to do because they want to keep Americans divided and angry and focused on things that let them off the hook. And then they accidentally allow this story through, which is a story of wonderful racial harmony, right? Of, of adoption, of coming together. Uh, the story of, of the adoptive parents speaking to the biological parents and having them involved in a way to say, look, you chose life for your kid and look at what a great life your kid gets. And the kid is like very cute baby, obviously, you know, is being selected as the Gerber baby. And she's there like, bop, 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 you know, and it's very, very heartwarming 
to watch this. Uh, the news doesn't like to let too many of those stories get through, particularly when it undercuts the narratives they're making about society and the arguments that they're making about the value of human life. But every so often, often through the media's own incompetence, one of those stories sneaks through and you begin to see the truth about the country, the truth about where we are. There's are some bad actors trying to gin us up and divide us and work against us. And those people are being exposed, not by the media, but by investigators in the DOJ. Okay. And the, the real truth about America though is beyond them, things are okay. People actually get along. We do have a, a love of our country, no matter how much the ideologues try to rile us up against our country, there is this kind of abiding love. And it's why uh, unthinkable events like the election of Donald Trump, unthinkable events uh, like people coming together, uh, those do happen even despite a press working all against us. Stay on guard. Don't let them distract you with the stories that they want you to focus on, with the feelings that they want you to feel. Keep your eyes on what is really going on because there are some interesting days ahead. That's our show. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. I'll see you tomorrow. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Ben Davies and directed by Mike Joyner. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Supervising producers, Mathis Glover and Robert Sterling. Technical producer, Austin Stevens. Assistant director, Pavel Widowski. Editor and associate producer, Danny D'Amico. Audio mixer, Robin Fenderson. Hair and makeup, Nika Geneva. Production assistant, Ryan Love. The Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2020. You know, the Matt Wall Show, it's not just another show about, about politics. I think there are enough of those already out there. We talk about culture because culture drives politics and it drives everything else. So my main focuses are life, family, faith. Those are fundamental and that's what this show is about. I hope you'll give it a listen. Mm -hmm.